Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up, guys? All right, so check it out, Scorpio. This is going to be your reading for August 2020, yes? Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading dated for the month of August 2020, that does not mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. And roles can be reversed here, okay? You can be flip-flopping, you know, you could be dealing, you could, I could be reading this energy and it's not your energy, but it's the energy of someone else that you're dealing with and then that's affecting, has some sort of effect on you, something like that, okay? Cool. So let's get into your pre-shuffle. Um, I feel a sense of dread for you, Scorpio. Um, and it's interesting because this is, this feels similar to something that I'm dealing with right now. And I don't really have Scorpio as a major placement. Um, I should look at which house Scorpio is in for me. I think Scorpio might be in the eighth house for me, but, um, I just feel like there's a sense of dread. There's, there's a... Uh, uh, Spirit just said a reckoning within that is happening here. You have the Ace of Swords, you have the Nine of Swords, you have the Empress, and at the bottom of the deck, you do have the Seven of Pentacles. And with the Empress, I'm hearing you're enabling some someone or you're enabling something to happen. And what I feel like here is... Um, You've known this for a while. You've known there is needed to be some sort of change that needed to be made for a while, and you may have been resisting it. And now it's getting to the point where you can't resist it any longer because it's, well, because first of all, well, because it's, it's giving you the same harvest over and over again, but you want a different harvest. And you know that. And I feel like at, at, at this point, it's gotten to, to the point where you know in order for your harvest to change here, then something needs to, the, some sort of truth needs to be told. Something needs to be cut out. Like I'm literally seeing you or whomever who's dealing with this, taking this sword of truth and just cu ch cutting away the weeds or cut cutting away the, the overgrowth or cutting away what has been growing or been allowed to grow. I'm hearing festering also. What's been allowed to fester within your reality that keeps giving you the same results that you never wanted to begin with in some cases. You're enabling it, you're allowing it to happen. The other thing with the Empress here is that there, there's a message of unconditional love that's involved here. Maybe some of the circumstances or the situations you find yourself in are you're in those situations because of a lack of unconditional love, because of a lack of nurturance and acceptance. Acceptance is a big thing that I'm getting from the Empress here because the Empress accepts all of her children, all of her subjects, all of her friends or family or those she cares for, regardless of how they present themselves. The Empress is all condition, all loving, unconditionally loving. So no matter who you are, what you do, how you live, um, how you act, how you present yourself, what your preferences are, what you, your likes and dislikes are, no matter what you've done in the past, she's still going to love you. But see, that's also where the enabling energy of the Empress comes through, because even if you're going through a toxic negative cycle and you're asking for something that's only going to keep that cycle going, she's going to give it to you. I mean, that's what you want, baby. OK, I'll, I'll do it for you. That's where the enabling enablement comes in or the enabling comes in. And then underneath underneath the seven, seven of Pentacles, which which was at the bottom of the deck, you do now have the Ace of Cups here. OK. Love, there's some sort of love that's coming into your situation right now and you're afraid to accept it. Ooh, now you've got the Ace of Wands too with the King of Cups. Okay, well, there you are, Scorpio. There is a level of emotional maturity that needs to come through here. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop there um, and I'm, uh, I'm going to pause for a second, but then we're going to get into the rest of your reading. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I had to go potty. <laughs> okay. I'm drinking a lot of water this morning. All right, Scorpio, I'm gonna just, do you know what? I'm just gonna go with it. Here we go. Hi, spirit. 
Please make me a clear channel for all Scorpios, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of August 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Scorpio, I'm giving you five shuffles. Yeah, and we'll see what we've got for you. One. Now, as I was doing that, that prayer and like getting settled into your energy, this is two, I was seeing red for you. And I, I, what I really want to say is there, you, oh, wow, Spirit kept saying, ground yourself. There's a regrounding that's happening. But then they just, as I was about to say it, they just said a massive regrounding has started here. This is almost as if like there's a reset button that's been pushed. And now you're reshaping your whole reality in some way. The way you present yourself, maybe? Three. Um, I also did see an image of a flower blooming, maybe even a lotus flower. This is four. Uh, oops, let's try that again. Four. Um, and... I mean, a lotus especially is a really good symbol because lotuses grow out of dark, mucky, murky water, right? They basically grow from like shit, right? <laughs> right? This is five. So you're really blossoming. You're blooming into a new person. And that's really great. That's really, really great. I'm hearing you got to trust yourself and trust the regrounding process. Boop. It's almost as if maybe you're, you're growing new roots, better ones even more applicable to your situation is what I just heard. Ah, uh, shit. First card out, overall energy, Scorpio, you have the Hermit. Ah, wow, this is really, re I've, I just heard reshaping your identity. And I do see the Hermit and the Page of Wands as similar energies. The Hermit being a major arcana version of this topic, the Page of Wands being a minor arcana version of this topic. With the Hermit, you're here expressing your true inner light you go on a um a journey of the self you you walk a solitary path you 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 go on a hermitage to find yourself to find your inner light to let and to allow that to shine and you shine that from uh from what from within right but that's often a re-identifying moment because when you're going in and finding your true inner light, you lose all of the conditioning that made you who you were in the past. You know what I mean? And, 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 and yes, I, yes, I'm using the word conditioning, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's all bad. Sometimes it's kind of negative. Sometimes it's really not that bad. It's just who, who, it wasn't who you truly, truly were, you know? And so from there, once you do that work with the hermitage or the hermit energy, you can then shine your light on the outside and almost re-identify yourself physically or in the way that you approach the world, um, the way you approach the physical world or the way you show up in, in the physical world with that page of wands energy, right? Okay. Oh. Okay, Scorpio. Underneath the ace of, I'm, not, I'm sorry, underneath the, um, the hermit is the queen of wands. Hmm. Then you have the eight of wands. Ah, but then you have the nine of swords here. So the queen of wands for you, Scorpio, is talking about um, getting into direct alignment with who you are or, or getting into alignment with what it is you truly want. I see the Queen of Wands as a minor arcana version of, no, I'm sorry, a physical embodiment of the law of attraction. I feel like there is something you really, really want here, Scorpio, but for some reason you're, you're anxious about it or you are not allowed to have it. You believe you're not allowed to have it for some reason. For some of you, for some of you, you have some blessings that are coming into your life that you're afraid of, and they might be coming very quickly, and now you're starting to panic a little bit, because you're like, holy shit, this is coming, what do I do now? You, you, what do you do now? You just go with the flow. This is very interesting, Scorpio. Let's get into, let's move on, because I really want to see what is next here. So first half of your reading, yes, first set of surrounding energies for you. We have the Queen of Cups now. 
Um, I want to say face your emotions, Scorpio. And you're an emo—I mean, you're an emotional sign too. Yeah, you're a Scorpio. You're a water sign, but you're also the masculine version of that, or the fixed version of that. And masculine energies tend not to really dive too deep into their emotions. I mean, that, I don't know. I kind of feel like that's fairly toxic. But maybe I'm just—maybe it's the person that I'm channeling for here that is. Uh, afraid of to face their emotions or something but with this queen of cups energy that's what i want to say you've got to face your emotions because the queen of cups is intently staring at that cup right she's looking in there she's she she's not looking at anything else other than what's going on in her own cup which means that she is working on understanding her emotions okay and that's kind of what i've i'm not gonna lie scorpio i'm feeling a little confused here for you I, 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 I don't really know where this is going. I'm not getting a clear picture of it, but I think you're not, you don't have a clear picture of it either. And also what I want to say here is, I just heard you've got to express yourself more fully, but I kind of feel like some of the things that might be coming towards you or maybe have been coming towards you are in direct alignment with your emotional state. And if you don't know what your emotional state is, then how could you ever hope to control as best you can what it is that comes towards you queen of wands eight of wands the queen of wands is that physical embodiment of the law of attraction okay so if you're not aware of if you're not understanding what your emotions are then how can you ever hope to attract anything that you want or anything of well i won't say that Okay, for in some cases, anything of benefit in your life. I mean, and everything that happens to us can be of benefit to us. It just depends on our perspective, but okay. Queen of Cups is coupled with the Five of Swords, Scorpio. The more you choose to ignore your emotions, the more you're going to fight a losing battle the more you're going to sabotage yourself. If you aren't aware of what your emotions are, if you aren't aware of what sends you into an emotional frenzy, whether that be good or bad, then you are actually, you are literally leaving yourself to the mercy of the elements. And it's not even meant to be that way. Because we have free will. We're not at the mercy of anything. We do have to surrender in order for the universe to bring up to us that which we truly want, but that doesn't mean we're at the mercy of anything. You are allowing yourself to be at the mercy of your own emotions. You, ah, that's right, we just had, remember in the pre-shuffle, we had the King of Cups come out. That's emotional maturity. That's standing your ground and weathering the storm no matter what's going on around you. But in order to do that, you first need self-awareness, Scorpio. Second set of surrounding energies for you. Ace of Pentacles. That's a good thing. This is a brand new start. And what I want to say to you is plant a new seed. Plant some new seeds. More than just one if you want to. You have an opportunity to plant a new seed. To plant a new seed. Spirit is saying to start a new cycle of emotional awareness within yourself. But in order for this, in order for you to get a new plant, in order for you to get a new life, you're going to have to get the right seeds, plant them, and then nurture them with water. Figuratively speaking, of course, but emotionally, you have to nurture them. Ace of Pentacles is coupled with the Chariot, Scorpio. And the Chariot talks about balance. It talks about emotional balance. It talks about balancing your light with your dark, your good with your bad, your masculine and your, and your feminine. It talks about being emotionally aware and allowing your emotions to drive you to where it is you want to go. Another element of the law of attraction. And it says, in this case, it says, your emotions tell you whether you're going in the right direction or not. If you're experiencing something that's causing you pain that's causing you emotional turmoil then you know then that's something that then that 
that, then you know that that is something that you have to move away from. Obviously, you may not be able to get away, get away from it with the snap of a finger. Okay, some of you are like, yeah, Eric, easier said than done. Okay, but it can still be done. You need to start moving yourself, gravitating towards that which makes you feel good. Because then that's going to tell you you're going in the right direction. That's going to bring you these things that you're aligning with or that you want to delight, align with, you desire to align with. So, oh shoot, there was something else I wanted to say about that. Oh, but then also, that doesn't mean that you're not going to experience things that don't make you feel good, that make you feel bad, that make you feel icky, that upset you. I mean, of course, you're still going to experience those things, but you have to allow those things to teach you about exactly what it is you don't want. Every instance that you have, that you experience, every situation that you experience in which it goes wrong or, well, not necessarily that it goes wrong, but something about it doesn't make you feel right. That's one more example of something that you don't want in your life. Don't worry about it. Don't throw a fit. Don't try to get even. Don't try to get revenge. No, 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 no. Just say, whoa, okay, I don't want that in my life, so I'm going to move away from that. And give myself, and clear that energy, uh, uh, clear that out of my energetic space and give me space to plant something new here that I do want. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Scorpio. There's that Ace of Swords again. The truth, honesty, spirit just said clarity. The truth hurts and sometimes it's not very nice. But are you gonna run away and hide from it all the time for the rest of your life, continually growing, grasping at straws and, and allowing yourself to grow or uh, 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 to uh, experience circumstances that are not in alignment with you, that you don't want it, that you no longer want to experience? Or are you going to face the facts? Are you going to face the truth? Ace of Swords is coupled with the Ten of Cups. What is truly going to make you happy? What is your ultimate emotional fulfillment? For some of you, for some of you, this does have to do with family or the people around you or the community around you. I'm seeing, I'm kind of seeing an, an example of like the, the, the one gothic kid or teenager or person in the family around all these bright, bubbly, happy people who are probably actually pretty fake anyway. And the gothic one is probably the most real, the most genuine, the most authentic. And this person decides to continue being around these other family members or being in this community or being in this friend circle or whatever, being in this environment in which, you know, they kind of accept you, but they look at you funny. They think you're weird. They're constantly trying to get you to, to smile or cheer up or be something that you're not. Why are you choosing to put yourself in that type of position? Because I have to, this is my family. Well, um, I'll tell you this, Scorpio. Yes, they are your family, maybe. They're your blood, your relatives, okay. But if they don't really truly accept you for who you are, then you don't have to stay around them. And for anybody that's feeling codependent on this family, your independence, your abundance is a God-given birthright. The only, the only way that can be taken away from you is if you allow yourself to believe that you are not worthy of it or you allow yourself to believe that you don't have access to it. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Scorpio, in the first half of your reading. Okay, all right, we have the Knight of Wands. So this is kind of an activation here. I feel like maybe this pep talk here was a good thing for you because now I kind of see you getting activated, getting motivated to do something, to shine your light more. I mean, this is a, this is a torchbearer, right? I also see this as a spiritual awakening or a spiritual activation or someone being a light worker. And as a light worker, 
you shine light and that's going to attract some moths to your flame that's going to attract some bugs that's going to attract some dark beings that want to feed off your light but sovereignty is key sovereignty is key scorpio okay so what i'm seeing with this for you in this knight of wands is that you're activated you're good you're ready to go you're you're trying something new here that's a good thing knight of wands is coupled with oh justice okay scorpio hold up wait hold on a second how you gonna do a complete 180 on me like that <laughs> like shit shit okay that's good that's what we want that's what we want to see Setting the record straight, balancing the scales, doing what it is that you need to know, need to do for yourself so that you're balanced and you're homo harmonious and you're good within yourself. So now maybe, now maybe you don't have to completely remove yourself from the family if this is a family situation, but you at least need to give yourself enough time to like fall back, reacclimate, get good on your own so that if, if and when you do decide to or want to or maybe need to interact with these people, their bullshit really can't affect you, you know? Because you're good with who you are. You're letting your light shine. You know what I'm saying? All right, Scorpio. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go over to um, Patreon where we're going to do your spirit messages part two. Yeah? If you're new to me... Um, and you don't know, I highly recommend that you go check out my Patreon account, patreon.com slash divine conversations. We have two tiers there. First tier would be the spirit, spirit monthly messages part two. That's only $5 a month. But then the second tier would be the full membership. You get everything, including the love readings and the spirit monthly messages and any sort of after hours sessions or Oracle readings that I do. Yeah. So with that said, if I don't see you over on Patreon, thank you so much for being here. I love you so very much. I hope this reading was helpful for you. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of September. Yeah? Take care. Bye. <laughs>